Hey there, friends. I'm so glad that you have joined me for another week here on YouTube. I'm Lauren Hill, and I blog at Mama's Learning Corner. Um, everything from printables and worksheets to homeschool encouragement to a few recipes here and there. Uh, several how-to tips for homeschool moms. So I'm thrilled that you're here today. And I have lots of reader questions about how I teach handwriting without tears to both of my younger girls. And so today I'm going to show you step by step exactly what we do. Um, and it's definitely not rocket science, you know, it's just what works for our home. So hopefully you can um, glean a few tips, you know, take what you can use and then, you know, see, see what you can implement in your own home. I'll give you two seconds of history about um, our family with handwriting. When my oldest son was um, five and six, he had just atrocious handwriting. Um, he could not remember from one letter to the next how to write it. His E would start on the bottom, his E would start at the top. Um, he could not write a sentence because he was so busy trying to figure out how to form the letter with his pencil. He could, he could you know, verbalize beautiful sentences, beautiful paragraphs, but he couldn't figure out how to get that onto paper. So, aside from giving him more time, which was definitely what he needed in terms of fine motor skills, I signed up to attend a Handwriting Without Tears workshop, and I was the only homeschool mom there. Um, lots of, te majority was teachers, um, some occupational therapists, but um, I was definitely the only homeschool mom there, so I was a little out of place. But they were very welcoming, and um, I got to learn the same things that you would teach a child, you know, in, in a traditional school setting. Um, but what it did, that, that workshop really gave me the confidence to, number one, give my son time, and number two, uh, find a methodical way to teach him handwriting so he could get his thoughts down on paper and quit worrying about the actual physical writing piece of it. So that was my, that was my son who is now 10, and I also have an eight-year-old girl who didn't have any struggles with handwriting. Um, and now I'm on my third child who is six and a half, almost seven, and she, she has the exact same pattern as my son. Um, cannot remember how to write a letter. She gets mixed up. Um, do I start here? Do I start there? You know, what is it? So aside from giving her more time, which is absolutely what she needs, um, we've slowly but consistently been using handwriting without tears, and she has just seen great improvement, as did my son. So I'm a big believer in this for our family. Um, also with my five-year-old who <laughs> still doesn't have a whole lot of desire to learn her letters. Um, I also use this with her. So I'm going to show you how I combine my five-year-old and my six and a half-year-old so we can um, do handwriting practice together. Now my five-year-old is in the green workbook, which is my first school book. And my first grader is in letters and numbers for me. And she did slowly work her way through the green book also, but this is where she has letters and numbers for me. Um, I do recommend getting the kindergarten teacher's guide. Now I have purchased them for every grade level, but really I have found that kindergarten is the one that you need, but that's just my opinion. Um, it really helps you solidify that technique and um, just gives other ideas. So I, I do recommend buying this for the kindergarten age. Um, the other manipulatives that we have um, to teach handwriting are the ABC cards. I'm not sure the official title of these, um, but they have the letter on the front. So H is for horse. And then it has um, like a pointing activity on the back, match the H, match the horse, um, which slate is correct, match the upper and lower case. Um, so we have these, these cards. I also have the slates, of course, and I have three of those, one for me to model and one for each of my girls. And we have um, the chalks with the um, little sponges for wet, dry, try, if, um, if you're familiar with that, which is like the basis of the Handwriting Without Tears program. And then I also have the wood pieces, and I do have two sets of these since I have two girls um, that are using them at the same time. So this has been a great investment for me. Um, if, if your children struggle with handwriting, like I didn't, I didn't really want to spend the money on all of these things for handwriting. I mean, how hard can handwriting be? But I quickly found out with my son that um, it required me to be educated and it required items for us to use. And so that's why I, um, that's why I've, I've invested some time and money into this. 
they should, my children should be able to write a sentence without having to remember how to write each letter. And so this has helped, this has helped um, get us past that hump. Also, in terms of manipulatives, we also have the um, Stamp and See kit, and that was something that I got um, when I attended the workshop. We use that some, but it's, it's not my favorite um, manipulative of the crowd. We also have the roller dough set, and we've used that uh, sporadically, but it's certainly not a staple like these particular pieces are. So when we sit down for handwriting, the first thing we almost always do is um, get out our slates and we review all the letters that we know. Handwriting without tears starts with frog jump capitals. So you start in the starting corner. Um, so F, for example, straight line down and then you jump and then you do the little lines across. So we start with all of the frog jump capitals that we know or, or whatever letters that we're on. I review, oh, at least six to eight letters because my both of my children still really need that consistent, almost daily review. We do handwriting four, three, four, five times a week at least three. Um, so they, they still need that review. And we always do those with slates and takes maybe six or eight minutes, not long, not probably not even that long. Um, the next thing we do is still with our slates in hand, we go to the next page um, in my daughter's Letters and Numbers for Me book. So we've done Q and now we're going to be on G on Monday. So I model um, the G on the slate and we practice it several, several, several times. Um, especially for my five-year-old. She needs a lot of practice with it. Most days we get out the, um, the wood pieces and practice that. We make sure that our model from the wood pieces looks like um, the model on the slate, which looks like the model in the book. We make sure that everything matches and they, they love to point out flaws. You know, oh, I can do it better. I'll do it this way next time. So then we, you know, that's another, another way to practice again. With my younger daughter, um, with my five-year-old, I always... Um, use the the letter sheets with her um, so she places her wood tiles on here they fit perfectly they were created for that so she would use this one to practice the letter G of course um, and then she would use her wood pieces to practice by herself sometimes we review other letters sometimes we don't um, and then I always go over the back with her she still needs a lot of reinforcement with letter sounds and letter formation, so letter recognition. So this is a good, just quickie reminder for her. If we have extra time for the day, I go through several other letters that we've already done just as a review. Um, if I've reviewed a long time on the slate, I don't review letters, you know, in these, these letters a long time. But I usually choose one or the other and do a good substantial review for her. Um, next, we might do the C and stamp or we might roll it out in Play-Doh if there's a lot of extra time for the day, but there's usually not. So after we've worked on the slate a while, um, my first grader will get her orange book and she will sit down and um, go through each of the G's by herself. And then we always do the last one together where you check to make sure that you've started in the right place, you've bumped the line, you know, all those checks that you do. And then she usually colors her picture. Um, and for my five-year-old, I find the letter G page for her, and then we go through each of the activities that it has. So, ooh, she already did her letter G. Um, so we'll have, to, we'll have to go back over it again. She already did her letter G. She cracks me up, though. She always is upset that the wood pieces are not the same, so she fills them incorrectly, which makes me laugh. So, um, handwriting without tears for the preschool age almost always has a coloring activity that has to do with picking up your crayon in the correct, with the correct formation, where you pick it up like a bird, drop the fingers and write. Um, I think they have a video on their website about that actually, about how to accurately pick up your pen, pick up your pencil or crayon so it rests on your index finger. Um, and then we practice the letter G and then she always colors her page. She's a big colorer. Um, and occasionally she will find another page in here that she really likes to do, even if we haven't gone over that letter yet, which is apparently what happened with the letter G. Because if she, um, you know, I would never squelch her desire to practice other letters. I mean, what does it matter? So, and actually I have an extra book. Um, I have an extra one of these for her because it certainly doesn't hurt for us to do the letter G, you know, two days in a row in the book. So she has another set that she practices with. So this particular, my first school book, has lots of activities, uh, pre-writing activities. For example, this um, pond page, you write the um, legs on the ducks 
um, the fence post, you practice lines down, you practice lines across. Um, lots of, you know, you can outline the little grass places. So handwriting without tears provides so many different resources to um, encourage fine motor skills and practice those fine motor skills so they can be successful with handwriting at some point, you know, whether it comes early to them or late to them. There are several advantages to teaching my um, girls together besides just the time factor. Um, it certainly is a time saver for me. But, um, you know, it's a lot of opportunity to practice writing and then holding your paper. And then, you know, my five-year-old sees my six-year-old do it or vice versa, and they remind each other. So they're really a good team and practicing all of those rules, you know, keeping your keeping your helping hand on your paper to keep it steady. Um, there's just lots of benefits to doing it together. And plus, this is an activity, and they see this as fun. They don't even consider this to be school, which makes my mama heart so happy because, I mean, isn't that what it should be? I mean, learning should be fun. And even though this is more, um, uh, it's a little on the workbook side because, I mean, you have to you have to practice writing, you know, writing with a pencil at some point. So even though it's, it's that type of activity, they see it as nothing but fun. Um, but they have all of this hands-on thing that they've done, you know, for the 15 minutes prior to actually writing in the book. So they, they see this as nothing but enjoyment, which I love. The last thing that I'll say about handwriting without tears, um, and one reason that I absolutely adore it, um, out of my four children, 10, 8, almost 7, and 5, I have two lefties. And I, you know, I'm a very right dominant person, so I had no idea what to do with a left-handed child. Um, I didn't want them to be one of those, you know, how left, some left, lefties write really with a hunch over, crooked over. I didn't want that to be. Um, there's just so many benefits with handwriting without tears for left-handed children. What my oldest daughter absolutely loved, she's in their cursive now, um, is that when there is an example, like a letter example, let me find one. For example, this lowercase letter D. In the past, her hand, as she's writing, would have covered up the example. And so she couldn't see the example again without lifting her hand. But handwriting without tears spaces them, so even a left-hander can still see the example, which I love that. Um, so it's very left-hand friendly. And there's also, it, um, especially in the teacher's guides, there's um, tips and tricks and ideas for lefties to help them not crook their hand over. Um, make sure that you are turning their paper in this particular way. Make sure their helping hand, you know, is on their paper so they they can have success with handwriting. My eight-year-old, who was my oldest lefty, um, her handwriting is gorgeous. She just did not have a problem as two of my other children did with that fine motor ability. She really developed that early thankfully. Um, and my youngest, who's five, is also a lefty, so we're still really working on keeping her hand straight up as opposed to that crook over. But handwriting with tears is um, just a very helpful um, guide in how to make that happen so my, so my lefties can, can write straight up and have excellent, le you know, legible handwriting. But um, my biggest goal is that they can write well, you know, the physical act of handwriting well so they can learn to write stories and sentences and poems and plays so they can learn to write all of those things well. And handwriting, you know, is just going to be on autopilot, which is the goal. So if you have questions about handwriting with tears, um, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, my oldest son has gone through all of their books so far. Um, and in fact, he's going to repeat one of the cursive books just because he likes cursive and he could use a little bit more practice at, practice with it. But um, it is, it's an excellent program. I'm sad that I didn't find it sooner in our homeschool career, but I'm thrilled that um, thrilled that I finally did. So if you have questions, you're welcome to email me. It's mama, M-A-M-A, -M -A, at mamaslearningcorner.com. And I'd love for you to stop by Mamas and see what there is um, to offer. There's homeschool encouragement, um, lots of practical how-to homeschool type things, um, lots of printables and worksheets for your pre-K to uh, elementary school students. So make sure you stop by and see what there is. And I'd also love for you to, just, to subscribe to me here on YouTube. You can just click the red subscribe button and um, you'll get an update whenever I publish a new video, which is usually every, um, every week or two. All right. I'm so glad you joined me today. I look forward to seeing you soon.